Pete Carroll, of course, John Snyder, where he said, I will be your biggest fan. And you love hearing that if you're a Seahawks fan. Um, but it sounds like the relationship is still good between ownership, Jody Allen, Burt Cold, Vulcan, uh, in the Seahawks organization and Pete Carroll. One thing that, uh, was pretty glaring though, is where he said, I, you know, I, I fought to continue to be the head coach and he believes that they can win in short order with whomever is the next head coach. And it, one thing that, you know, with Pete Carroll, it, he's not going to be a guy who meddles or tries to, you know, subvert the next head coach of the organization. He wants them to succeed there. But I do th- find it very interesting that ownership was pushing for him to step aside this season. Um, that, is a little alarm. You have one of the, you have the greatest coach in organizational history. Uh, he is 72. He, you, you heard it in his voice, how much the game means to him, how much the Seahawks mean to him, how much his team means to him and the culture that he built there. And I thought that, that was one thing that really stuck out to me is Pete Carroll sitting there and in, in saying culture, culture is what wins. Culture is what wins. You can build a staff of, in very bright football minds. But what is the difference between organizations that win and lose is culture. You met, you call him Dweeber in, in Chicago. It's because his culture sucks. Dweeber knows football. Frank Reich knows football. Arthur Smith knows football. Those guys are all fired this year. Getting guys to buy in is the hardest part. Getting everybody to pull in the same direction, that's the hardest part. Because every single coach in the National Football League, every single coach at the Division I level in college football, they know more football than you ever will. They've forgotten more football than you will ever know. They are all bright, X's and O's wise. Culture's what wins. Culture's what gets guys to do things that normally they'd be unwilling to do. But if you have a good culture and you can get guys to buy in and it's, it comes in a variety of ways, whether it is demanding nature or in Pete Carroll's case, you know, he is very demanding and don't get that twisted with Pete Carroll being a player's coach, but Pete Carroll is a player's coach and he's relatable to his players and his players relate to him. And he goes the extra mile to build and develop those relationships with the players. That's what wins. That's what wins. And he wants to maintain that culture. And I think that's going to be the interesting part about as you see who the next head coach is going to be. And maybe that was the shortcomings of Dan Quinn when he was in Atlanta, which by the way, they were pretty damn good in Atlanta when they went to a Super Bowl and blew a 28, three lead, right? Pretty good. They were Hey, look, Dan Quinn is a good coach. Um, but can Pete Carroll help him maintain the culture of Seattle to get the X's and O's that he has to get the, the buy-in that he can get to kind of push it over the top. If that is going to be the guy who they end up hiring or whomever it is. And he'd for sure get the the stamp of approval from Pete, which I think is big. But, but I think when you listen to that press conference, you see why he was successful. Yeah. You could hear it in his voice. You could hear it while he's fighting through tears the entire time. He didn't want to go. Now, while it might be amicable, it felt like if he could stay another year, he would. Yep. And so to me, that feels like maybe it wasn't necessarily his decision, but he saw the writing on the wall and he saw that the decision was going to be made. And so instead of going the, uh, the, the Wink Martindale, where he cusses out Brian Dable <laughs> and just MFs everyone on his way out. Pete did the stand up thing. And the thing that I feel like he's really done his entire career, which is be a class act and go out the right way and thank the people that you're supposed to thank and say the right things. And then when you do leave, everyone will remember you fondly. It's like when you get broken up with. Mm hmm. If you go out and absolutely trash that person to their face in the breakup or to other people, to your mutual friends, people that might feel good in the moment. And people are going to be like, yeah, man, you, you really got out. You dodged a bullet there. 
but all deep down in their in their hearts and in their brains, they go, "Why wow, that guy's kind of a jerk." I kind of see why they got dumped. Yep. When Pete Carroll goes out and says the right things and treats the this organization the right way and thanks the people that he's supposed to, he will be remembered in a much higher light. You know, the interesting part, and this is what I, this is what I really appreciate about Pete Carroll was we often hear coaches that'll fight back tears during these sorts of press conferences and stuff, but it was the moments in which Pete Carroll was fighting back his tears, right? he wasn't just a blubbering mess up there. He was fighting back tears when he was talking about relationships. He was relationship with his wife, his kids, his players, the good times that they had talking about John Schneider. Those are the times that he's getting choked up. That is why people get into coaching, right? A lot of people just like they get into coaching because it's like, oh, it's football. It's what I know, right? The successful people in coaching get in it for the people too. You know, it, it's it's a really weird thing. You know, no matter what level you coach at, whether you know, there's probably a lot of youth coaches or high school coaches or small college coaches that that are listening right now that sit there and you, you're kind of going, yeah, that is that that's why you do it because you go out to practice. And when you, especially when you get to the higher levels, like when you get into college or when you get in, into professional football, football has been their vehicle for life. And the meaning of the game means a heck of a lot more. And you're teaching at a far higher level, but you can make those connections at a higher level as well. And sometimes the best parts of any player's day or hell, any coach's day is when they go out on that practice field because that game that has meant so much to them, that has taught them so much, that's your release, right? And if you can make those connections and you can meet with somebody on a human level when you're playing the game, that is where coaching pays off. And you can feel that with Pete Carroll. Right. When you, you can feel that with Pete Carroll, that wins losses are, are what, it, what, what the game is about. Right. When that's what, what happens when he coaches on Sundays, but coaching for him is far more than that. It is what happens Monday through Saturday that leads up to what happens on Sunday. And you can tell that dude is successful because of it. There are a lot of, especially old school and his age of coaches mm. that, the old saying, I treated everyone the same, treated them like dirt. That's not what Pete Carroll was. And when you go back and, and I encourage people and they will now that he is uh, no longer the head coach, they're going to go back and look at old YouTube clips or read old news articles. He tried to be that coach when he was in New York and when he was in New England. That's the kind of coach he tried to be because that's what everyone else was. Mm -hmm. And when he went to USC, he realized he couldn't be successful unless he came in. He's He's got this pyramid of success. And it's not like Ron Swanson's. It's a legit thing. It, or John Wooden's. It's similar to John Wooden's. <laughs> look, it's all, it's all an offshoot of John Wooden. It is what it is. But when you look at the pyramid of success that he has created and how he lives his life and how every single day in his organization, when he's your football coach, there's a saying and there's a meaning and he lives it as well. I think that that shows one, why he's successful, but it also shows the way that football is moving towards mm -hmm. and the way that coaches have to act nowadays. And he seems to be on the forefront of it where he is a true players coach. He genuinely cares about his players. It isn't someone from their ivory tower saying, Hey, this is what this football team needs to be. And if you can't get in line, like I'm saying, your ass is cut. But, and I don't care about your family. He cares about the people around him. It's why he's a good dude. It's why people want to play for him. Several players were there too, including Geno Smith, Bobby Wagner, uh, in attendance for Pete Carroll's press conference. Uh, one thing that I want to make sure we, we discuss here, I talked about how every coach knows X's and O's and it's kind of the culture that you can build and create that kind of takes it to the next level. Pete Carroll does not nearly get enough credit for the innovator he is at, on the defensive side of the football, especially in the secondary, and how good of a coach he was in the back end of his defenses. Like, it's not a mistake 
how the Legion of Boom was built and created, you know, and it was not, I mean, he has, he has done it in several iterations and variations, but the long pterodactyls that he put out on the edges, the zone schemes in the downhill play of his strong safeties. I mean, he found guys that were to a system that square peg in a lot of round holes around the league. And he found he he carved out some square holes in his secondary and he filled them. And that's why those defenses were so damn good. And people forget about this too. And I'm just young enough to remember the USC teams largely because my grandpa, uh, great grandpa Wilbur, big USC Trojan fan. So I watched a lot of the Reggie Bush, Matt Leinart teams growing up. They don't get enough credit for how good those defenses huh. were. Those defenses were insane. Cause when people think about them, they think Matt Leinart, they think Reggie yeah. Bush, they think, Lendell White. Absolutely. They do not give those defenses enough credit. There was a point in time where he had a linebacking core that was Ray Malaluga, Clay Matthews Jr., and Brian Cushing. Pretty damn good. That would be an incredible group in the NFL, let alone in college. In the Pac-10. Just dominant. Yeah. Dominant. All right, we got a couple offshoots of uh, the worst day on the web. We will take a break from Seahawks. We will revisit it as the show goes on because Pete Carroll out after 14 seasons as the Seahawks head coach, including uh, what does it look like for the Seahawks moving forward from a roster construction issue as you head into this uh, offseason? 23rd in the NFL in salary cap space. You have the 16th overall pick. You do not own a second round pick, but you got two thirds that you can work with. 